Need fast, cheap, reliable MUD coins? Go to MMOXP.com for the cheapest coins on the market. And use discount code MONEYSHOT for an additional 5% off your next order. Link in the description below. <laughs> Welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Mad Money Shot, sniffing out the Madden cheese as always. Uh, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to you guys. Got another top 5 defensive video for you guys. I'm doing an updated version uh, from basically the last time I did it, which was kind of like, like maybe the first month that Madden 20... 21 came out uh, so I want to do a redo for you guys because I got a lot of new defenses a lot of new uh, stuff that I'm using right now so I thought being that Christmas just dropped and a lot of people are probably picking this game up this is a perfect time uh, to redo this top five video and give you guys the top five defenses to be using right now if you just picked up this game uh, starting tomorrow we'll be doing some next gen tips I'm hoping to have a next gen uh, gameplay video for you guys with some tips on the differences between uh, this current uh, you know system and the next gen systems uh, I don't really see a lot of huge differences but for the people that have next gen, I mean, I pre I'm pretty much using the same stuff on offense and on defense. The game just feels a lot slower to me. But if you want to see next gen tips uh, starting tomorrow, do me a favor, hit the like button and let me know in the comment section. Other than that, if you want to see the uh, entire video or some gameplay footage of these particular defenses I'm showing you right now, uh, just make sure to check the description because I'm going to have links to the full videos uh, with gameplay and stuff like that in the description. So if you want to see these in action, check it out there. This is kind of a shortened version uh, just to get people that just got this game uh, going into Madden 21 just for people that just bought the game want to know what the best defenses are. So if you want to see that, check that out. Link in the description below. Other than that, let's go and let's get right into the video. Out of this formation and the best pass defense defense which is the cover three cloud so i'm definitely going to start off with the cover three cloud now before i get into the video though i just want to let you guys know this video is brought to you by my coin sponsor mmoxp.com if you guys want to get your mutt team up like mine i currently have like a 93 on offense and a 94 on defense i don't know what's keep holding me back on offense i mean i'm real close to that 94 there check them out link in the description below and use discount code money shot to get five percent off what's already like the cheapest coins on the market so check that out other than that let's go and let's get right into the the video here all we really have to do uh first thing we're going to do every time is set up my my run defense if you watch my gameplays the first thing i do is i pinch my defensive line you can spread the linebackers but i actually like to bring them out and down a little bit more anyway so i typically manually do it i like to have it just kind of like this i also got to make sure i'm always going to put my uh my user here on a blitz and I typically like, it depends on like what level my opponent's passing on, but I typically like to, to put this hard flat into a cloud flat. Just take away anything deep. Um, that's pretty much how I'm going to do. Because if it is something, if somebody's hitting me with a drag or something like that, I'm probably going to follow them across anyway. Although ultimately the last adjustment's going to take care of that a lot of times as well. Because ultimately I like to put one of these defensive ends into a either a bluff blitz, which puts them into a three wreck, basically taking away any middle stuff. Um, three wrecks also do a really good job of following drags and crossers and stuff like that, so I really don't have to worry about that too much. You also have the ability to put this uh, this defensive end into a hard flat underneath uh, the curl flat. That'll basically create like a Mabel concept. Um, if you're doing this, I would say you probably want to set your curl flats at like a, a little bit of a deeper depth. If somebody's hitting you with a lot of crossers, putting your curl flat at a deeper depth is probably the best idea. But like I said, I like to basically um, cloud the middle here so that I can control the outside because I find that crossers, zones don't do a great job against crossers anyway and drags anyway. So I'd rather have um, the, the middle flooded so that I can run around. If I see something, I can follow it across and I can basically, if there's like a deep, you know, anything, anything outside of the, the middle area i don't i want to be able to leave that with confidence that it's taken care of and a three wreck is the closest thing to having a second user on the defense uh it's any pretty much any play at a nickel normal nickel two four five uh any formation that looks just like this which you should be able to find in just about every single playbook in the game i'm using the chiefs because uh, I put out an ebook from the Chiefs, uh, and it's one of the better, in my opinion, one of the better nickel package defenses, whether it's the Big Nickel, which is one of the few uh, playbooks that has the Big Nickel anymore, or like I said, the regular nickel normals that, are, that come in the game. But ultimately, like I said, you can pick just about any cover two man from any formation in the game that looks like this, and it's going to work the exact same way, which is why, uh, I, like I said, I didn't go into it in too much depth. It's not an actual money play. It's a concept that you can find in just about any playbook in the game. 
Um, the most important things are going to be uh, hitting the D-pad to the left twice. Now that was something that, like I said, I didn't mention in the gameplay. I think a lot of people, a lot of people still do it like the old-fashioned way, where they try to go across to these positions, these particular players, and manually set them up in vertical hooks, which is fine. But given that a lot of people online will give you an opportunity to go through your lineup that way, a lot of people still do it the old-fashioned way, where they cycle through the entire thing just by hitting B. They don't even realize that they can hold the B button and then directionally do it. But still, to set it up as fast as possible, hit D-pad to the left twice, gives you the icon, so then I'm going to hit X, put him on a vertical hook, and then boom, we got our both sides in vertical hooks. That's something that a lot of people, I think, probably struggle with. Uh, one of the next things is going to be um, putting this, uh, if it's uh, for the run alignment, if I have a formation that looks like this, like I have a gun formation, pretty much the only run play that it could be would be an inside zone. So to be better against stopping the run, shifting my defensive line in that direction so that basically he's running into three defensive linemen on that spot is going to be a good way to go you could also just pinch the entire defense a lot of times i do that uh, especially if they're like in a single back look i'll just hit the rb button and then down on the left stick to pinch the entire defense but that's really if there's more of an opportunity it just runs the ball here that's really if there's more of an opportunity against different things as you can see we get a sack and we get a coverage sack i didn't even really mean for the ball to be hiked so we're going to do that again like i said here if you want to set up uh, I typically will shift my defense in the direction of, um, you know, the possible inside zone pretty much every time. And then, once again, like I said, D-pad to the left twice, drop these guys in the hooks. The last thing that I'm going to do uh, is a lot of times I'll QB contain, especially if I have a quarterback like this. Uh, that's mobile because one of the the passing lanes aren't really going to be there this defense will take away most passing lanes but a lot of times your opponent will either slide in the pocket and try to uh either hold the ball uh till till they get receivers coming back to the ball which a lot of times will, will do pretty good against this defense you got to watch for that when it comes to using the middle uh, but putting these guys uh into um a qb container a lot of times will help uh, as far as uh, when they try to move out of the pocket, it'll help them to get pressure. Uh, sometimes the QB contain, if you have them in a certain spot, like pinching like this, a lot of times it'll put both into it. Uh, if you if you slide the, the the protection one way or the other, a lot of times it'll only put one. So you kind of have to mess with that to get them both in a QB contain. Uh, but that's not ultimately the, the end of the world. And then the last step will be putting myself on a blitz. And the reason I'm doing that is because of the change of direction penalty. It's a trick where basically my defensive player will have a free range of motion based off of the fact that he's on a blitz, which is something that a lot of people know also. So I'll be able to move faster with this guy on a blitz. I don't actually have to blitz, but it's just going to help. So like I said, I'm really trying to take away deep middle. You can see right there, crossers, drags, that's still going to give this a slight issue, but it's not going to be enough that's going to be consistent. It's not something that you're going to really uh, run into a lot of issues with. Now, another adjustment you can make uh, when it comes to this defense um, is going to be um, putting these uh, these guys into curl flats, putting them into uh, hard flats. Uh, that's really all specific off of what your opponent does. So if your opponent hits you with a flat a couple times or like right there, let opponent hit me with a drag, I can take away that drag the next time just by putting one of these guys on a hard flat. Um, I can put them both on a hard flat if I really want to. I can put them both on curl flats if I really want to. I just find that the best way to go and what leaves me open the most to free range is going to be dropping these guys back into vert hooks. But when I get into uh, predictable passing situations, one of my favorite plays to run uh, is out of the dime one four six. Uh, the cross three fires the play. Like I said, if you watch my channel for a long time, you've seen me run this play. I put out a video about it last year. So this defense right here, like I said, this is something I use quite a bit in uh, obvious passing situations. It's not something I would call necessarily a base defense uh, that you can use to stop the run. Although I'll show you guys uh, a good way to set this up against people that could possibly run against it in a minute. Uh, but ultimately, this is something that I use in obvious passing situations. It's not something that you want to use all game. Uh, so obvious passing situations include things like second and long third and long fourth and long um, you know something like that uh, also if it's uh, your opponents down uh, late in the game say they're down a touchdown or two they got a pass uh, say they're you know say there's like 30 or 40 seconds before halftime they got a pass a good length of the field these are situations where you want to use this play also use this in the red zone a lot if it's third and goal from like the eight or longer I'll pull this play out because like I said it's not necessarily the best run defense but if it's, it's if they have to pass it's, it's almost impossible to pass against it. a lot of people really struggle against that so all I'm really going to do when it comes to the adjustment is I'm going to hit uh, right on the right stick and then up 
to zone all. So that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead. Let's like I said, I, a lot of times I can bring this guy down and use her him. If I have somebody uh, in the in the in the um, in the seam, like say I want to take away this tight end specifically, I can man that guy. Um, I can man the uh, the Y route here. If, like I said, if I'm if I'm thinking that we're gonna have uh, a seam play, that's something that I can do. Although typically, like I said, I'll I'll typically cover the seam. I'll typically worry about that myself because it's a cover three. I'm typically gonna use her that. And then this is pretty much the play. So like I said, the only thing that can really give this play issues. Uh, other than plays up the seam as we get a, a, a nice, uh, I want to call that a covered sack because he was definitely taken off. I'm going to see that a lot. The computer is not necessarily going to make the mistake of throwing into these zones uh, like a lot of uh, users will. They'll probably be, he'll probably be running a lot of taking off. Here's a snare. This is a look like I was saying. If I see a look like this, this is definitely one where that guy can go right up the seam. If he's uncovered like that, this is a play where I'm going to want to man somebody. So that's definitely a look right there where I would say, okay, we're going to man that guy. And then, like I said, I'll, one of the main reasons that I like to run this defense is it really let, it really frees me up because I have so many yellow zones. I'm typically free to take one of these guys and roam however I want to roam and try to find, uh, you know, try to find interceptions. That's basically the idea. It frees me up as a user defender because I don't really have a responsibility because of all these yellow zones. So, like I said, I'm going to man that guy up particularly, let him get taken away by that. And then, like I said, hopefully they don't run a lot until I make the run adjustments. But you can see right there, I mean, there was a crossing route there. And he's basically just chucking up. There's nothing really open. That's the point. This is going to be one of the harder defenses to pass against. So like I was saying, if I really want to take away uh, some run lanes, all I have to do is D-pad down, D-pad to the left and down, and then D-pad to the right and down. And you can see how it takes away those uh, those run lanes. Now I'm also still, I'm still going to do the zone all adjustment. You can see the outside guys typically are the ones... Um, that become in, in this particular look become the drop zones, which is perfect So this is pretty much if I want to make a run defense if somebody's running the ball I can even bring this guy in a little bit like especially on a play like this because if it's going to be a run It's going to be an inside zone uh, and we can really take away any run lanes So the formation that I'm going to show is going to be the even 6-1 out of the 4-3 when I first saw this formation earlier in the year, I really didn't use it at all. But over time, it really became one of the most consistent run-stopping defenses for me. Uh, the number one play, like I said, this is more like my base defense. That's the cover four quarters. So I'll go ahead and I'll show that first. So to set this defense up, there's really not a lot of setup to it, which is one of the best things about it. Um, number one, all I really have to do is I got to close up that gap in the middle here. So if I hit the D-pad to the left and then down, I'll take away that gap. I typically blitz my user, uh, which if you time this right, you can shoot this gap. This is a small gap, but it's a gap, and you can shoot it, and, and a lot of times you can catch the running back in the backfield, uh, which is nice. Other than that, I mean, that's pretty much it for the base defensive setup. There's two additional setups that you can do whether you think your opponent's going to run or pass. Now, number one, I pretty much always want to, to bring these cornerbacks and safeties down because number one anytime you're in a cover four cover four safeties uh they usually if you watch they'll usually shoot down not 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 necessarily like like you know shoot down like uh like you were run committing but they'll definitely play down first and then play back which is typical of any cover four cover four safeties will typically uh play the run first the, the guys in the middle which is one of the reasons it makes it a really good run defense uh now when it comes to the pass defense even when these guys are down like this they typically don't get beat, which is nice. They're not typically, a lot of defenses you don't want to press because these outside cornerbacks get beat by streaks and stuff like that. This is not one of those defenses, and especially in this scenario where there's no receiver even over here, I don't have to worry about that. So I definitely want him down in the box. So like I was saying, if you definitely want to do a, a step up against run defense, there's only real one adjustment you have to make, and that's basically hitting wire triangle and then doing underneath. If you do that, these outside linebackers will shoot down and contain that outside a lot better. So that's one of the reasons that if you really want to kick your run defense up a notch, hard flagging is going to be the way to go. Uh, if you think that they're passing, though, I would say that's not the way to go. If you if you suspect that they might be passing, leaving them in a quarter flat. Once again, if you're on a goal line, the hard flats are fine. But if you suspect that they're changing it over to a passing player, they're just in a run formation, and they're going to play action you and hit you with a passing play, the quarter flats are much better defense. And then the last step, if I'm suspecting a passing play, would be to put one of these defensive ends, uh, either the whoever's the fastest, the, the X or the B, uh, it doesn't really matter. If you can bring up your icons, by the way, I get people to ask me this all the time when I, when I just made a video about how to three wreck a player. You hit the D-pad to the left twice, 
brings up your icon select one and then hit your right stick to the right and now you have a three rec so this is pretty much what your defense would look like in a if you suspect the pass and like i said it's also a really solid pass defense but the, the play that i'm going to show you today i'm doing a little bit of updating on my ebook and the play that i'm going to show you guys today is out of the big nickel over g but it's going to be an a gap blitz uh which is going to be coming right straight heat right up the middle and the good thing about it is you can do it out of just about any single coverage in this particular playbook you don't have to pick a specific play um, you, you can just pick a base coverage, really. I'm going to be showing it out of a cover two and a cover three. But if you like running cover four palms, there's a way to do it out of that. You can run it out of the, the cover six trap. It really doesn't matter. So as far as the setup goes, um, it's actually a pretty easy setup. It's not really too crazy. The first thing you want to do is you're going to want to shift your defense, which is going to be the RB button or the R1 button if you're on PlayStation. Um, that's going to bring up your shift defense menu. Then you're just going to basically hit the left stick to the right uh, and shift the defense. Now this here will flip these linebackers which I'm not really a huge fan of I wish you didn't do that but that's fine the next step is going to be hitting the d-pad to the left and then hitting slant right which you can see right there is right stick to the right that's going to be sending the uh, the defensive tackles over in that direction third step like I said I really I kind of messed this up I mean I got Willie Gay over here but that's fine he can still do it so we're just gonna blitz him and then we're gonna blitz our user and bring him down right here over the defensive tackle the last step is going to be QB containing and then I also if I have time re blitzing the the guy on the left the, I really only want to QB contain on the right side uh, because that's really for if the quarterback rolls in the direction away from the the blitzing uh, linebacker or safety which is really gonna be the plan and then I'm also gonna guess pass because that's just gonna help if there's a play action or something a lot of times if you don't guess pass the blitzing linebacker will bite on the play action and tackle the running back or something but in this scenario it won't make a difference just always guess pass that's really the best way to go so like I said, I'm really just going to stay here for like a split second after the play hikes. Just kind of try to keep this guy off. And then you can see we get a straight A gap. Uh, so that's it. That's the vid. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. Money shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team. Where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.